How good the Lord is. Blessings to each of you. Indeed, we're blessed of God to have made it back to the second Sunday of this new year, 2023. It's a blessing from God that we're able to worship him in spirit and in truth. And we're excited that this year our theme is transformed through spiritual formation. So we're going to go through this year working on drawing closer to God and understanding how to put into practice um, the spiritual disciplines, Christian spiritual disciplines. So today, I want you to get your Bibles and go with me to James chapter 4. I want to look at verse number 8. That's our foundational scripture for this theme of spiritual formation, where James talks about drawing near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Uh, purify your hearts, you double-minded. In essence, it's saying to us that it is our responsibility to draw closer to God. God will then draw closer to us. But we also have to have a clean hand. Our outward work must be clean. But clean heart suggests our inward work and our inward hearts must be clean. And we cannot have this double-mindedness where we are with God, against God. We have to be fully committed. So I look forward to sharing that word with you momentarily entitled Spiritual Formation 101. So make sure that you prepare to take your notes so that you can study those notes beyond the sermonic moment. Also, this is our new service times today, 8 o'clock a.m. in person, 1045 in person, 8 a.m. in person, 1045 in person worship, and 9 o'clock virtual. So we look forward to you joining with us either in person or virtually maybe now or another time, but we thank you this morning for joining with us in this virtual space, but we pray that God would continue to bless you in the days to come. Also, be looking out for our Wednesday night Bible study and teaching schedule for the upcoming weeks. We look forward to sharing. We'll have a hybrid approach. We'll have some in-person and some virtual Bible study, but we'll do both of those approaches to make sure that we are blessing the people of God. We're going to ask you to go with me in prayer now as we seek God's guidance and direction for this worship experience. Gracious and eternal God, our Father, we stop now to say thank you. Thank you, God, for another day. Thank you for the bounty of blessings that you have so graciously poured upon our lives. God, we pray now that you would bless this worship experience, that we would encounter you in a very fresh way. Lord, that our lives would be more connected to you. We thank you, God, for who you are. It is in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, that we offer this prayer. And every child of God said, Amen. Now I want you to join with us as our music ministry lead us in worship. God bless you. I love you and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. And love 
great is thy faithfulness oh great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I have needed Jesus your hand your hand has provided great is thy faithfulness oh Lord unto me pardon for sin and of peace that into rest thine own dear pleasures to cheer and to guide strength for today and a bright hope for tomorrow blessings of Ten thousand, ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercy. All I have needed, Jesus, your hand, your hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Lord. and blessings to you once again. This is our opportunity to give back to God a portion of what he has given unto you. And I don't know about you, but I get excited every time the Lord gives me the opportunity to partner with the church to give back a portion of what he has given unto me to make a difference in the work of the kingdom. So right now, there are multiple ways that you can give, and we would love for you to partner with us here at the New Mount Island Baptist Church as we focus on kingdom building, looking to transform our community and ultimately the world for the glory of God. So get ready now to give your very best gift to God and give it with a spirit of joy and excitement because the Bible teaches God loves a cheerful giver. So let's prepare our hearts and our minds to give unto God. Let's go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege, the opportunity to give back to you a portion of what you have given unto us. God, I pray for both hand and heart of each giver. I pray that none would lack because of their gift. And God, those who do not have uh, 
any resources to give. I pray, God, that you would bless their lives so they can financially be a blessing to the work of kingdom building. God, I pray for those who haven't but yet have not reached that place of obedience that your Holy Spirit would convict their heart and they would understand the joy and the blessing of being a part of giving to kingdom work. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray and every child of God said, amen. We give because we love the Lord and because we believe in kingdom building. God bless you. How good the Lord is. Blessings to each of you. Indeed, we're blessed once again to have this opportunity to share the word of God. If you have your Bibles, I would ask you to turn with me to the book of James, James chapter number four. And I want to read one verse from that chapter, James chapter four, verse number eight. Hear the word of God as it speaks to us. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be unto our God. I want to tag this harmonic presentation, Spiritual Formation 101. Spiritual Formation 101. As we engage this new year, uh, the thrust of our church thematically will be transformed through spiritual formation. And spiritual formation uh, focuses on deepening one's relationship with God. When we think of this idea of Christian spiritual formation, it's the process of being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ for the glory of God and for the sake of others. The response is submission. It's about being humbly submitted to God. It's about situating your life in the presence of God where you are humble before God, you are submissive to the will, the word, and the way of God. And this formation is an organic, lifelong, holistic process, which involves right thinking, which is orthodoxy, right behavior, which is orthopraxy, and right feelings, which is orthopathy, of individuals and of communities. Everyone, all of us, we are quite familiar with what is required when one is exercising and they are in the midst of training so that the body can be healthy. Uh, various exercises that are employed in this process of calisthenics, running, biking, lifting weights, stretching, and other exercises that will really cause the body to be strengthened and cause the body to be healthy. But the real question is, what are the exercises? What are the barbells? What are the weights that build spiritual strength? What exercises can we use to train the soul? And throughout this year, we will be introducing the exercises that will train the soul. And those exercises are spiritual disciplines. Spiritual disciplines are simply the habits, practices, and experiences that are designed to develop, grow, and strengthen certain qualities of spirit, to build the muscles of our character and expand the breadth of our inner life. These soul workouts, if you will, are spiritual disciplines, are personal. They are inward exercises that are practiced some alone. Some are practiced with others. Some are practiced within community. It is Richard Foster who writes in his book, Celebration of Discipline, the Path to Spiritual Growth. The desperate need today is not for a greater number of intelligent people or gifted people, but for deep people. So as we engage the spiritual disciplines, 
they are, they are to be engaged so that our relationship with Christ will be deepened. We seek to become deep people for Jesus in our walk with God, deeper walk, deeper understanding, deeper relationship. And the deeper our relationship is with Christ, the deeper our relationship is with God, the better our relationship will be with others. Many, many people talk about uh, going to the next level, uh, going higher, but the truth of the matter is, in order to go to the next level, in order to go higher, we must first go deeper. And that is what uh, we intend to help our church do throughout this year. Pastor Kennedy and I will be teaching and preaching in a way, employing the spiritual disciplines in a way that it will cause us to have a deeper connection with Christ, a deeper relationship with God and throughout this year we're going to engage uh, 12 spiritual disciplines. There are four inward spiritual disciplines which are meditation, prayer, fasting, and study. Then there are four outward spiritual disciplines, simplicity, solitude, submission, and service. And then there are four corporate spiritual disciplines, confession, worship, guidance, and celebration. The verse that we have before us in James helps us in gaining somewhat of a foundational understanding of spiritual formation. It, in essence, argues for us that we must be close to God, we must be clean for God, and we must be committed to God. As James writes this, he gives some perspective of some things that we should intentionally seek to avoid, that we should guard ourselves from, things that we should rid ourselves of. And what he in essence says in the A portion of the text, when he says, be close to God, he says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. What this says to us is that this is, first of all, it's a deliberate pursuit. Not only is it a deliberate pursuit, it is a definitive pursuit, but it is also a disciplined pursuit. When, when we pursue God, when we draw near to God, we will experience then divine pursuit. God will draw near to us. See, if we want the promise, watch the text, if we want the promise, which is God drawing near to us, we must first follow the command in humble obedience and draw near to God. The problem with many people is that they want the promise without being obedient. We want God drawing near to us, but the text says, draw near to God, then God will draw near to us. Now, draw near to God is an aorist active imperative mood verb. The first draw near that we are to do is an aorist tense active imperative mood. It suggests that we have the responsibility to draw near to God, and it is a command. It is not an option for the believer. It is not optional as about you getting close to God. It is commanded that we draw close to God. It is the responsibility. Therefore, it is deliberate because of the command, but it is definitive because it does not simply say draw near, but it says draw near to God. That is a definitive pursuit. That means that we should have purpose in this pursuit and the person that we are pursuing is God himself himself in the whole idea of, of spiritual formation. It is about us drawing closer to God, drawing nearer to God. And then it's disciplined because in order to draw near to God, it does not happen by osmosis, but it happens by discipline. Therefore, we exercise the spiritual disciplines, the inward, the outward, and the corporate spiritual disciplines. When we do that,
that in a disciplined way, in a consistent way, we will discover that our lives are growing deeper in Christ Jesus. That means that you cannot sporadically study. You cannot just pray when it is convenient. You cannot just meditate when you feel like it. It must be a disciplined part of the daily life of the believer that when we exercise the spiritual disciplines, we have an intentional, deliberate focus. And that intentional, deliberate focus is to ultimately draw near to God. We are trying to get closer to God because we understand the closer we are to God, the more our lives will look like God, the more our lives will be in tune with God. The closer we get to God, the more we become like Christ, the more we look like Christ. That is ultimately the goal. And it is the spirit of God who gives us the ability to draw closer closer to God. But then, beloved, we have to understand he moves on and he says, not only must we be close to God, but the B portion of the text says we must be clean for God. Notice what the text says. The text says in verse number eight, the B portion says, cleanse your hand, you sinners, and purify your hearts. This This is suggesting that being clean for God should be noticed outwardly and inwardly. Now, the key is understanding the text says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. Notice who is to be the agent to cleanse your hands. It is not simply God that's supposed to do that. It is the work of the believer that we clean our hands. It's easy for us to to put this work on someone else. But according to what James says, it is the responsibility of the believer who's commanded to clean up their conduct. Beloved, what this says is, If I am drawing closer to God, God is drawing closer to me. It it, it moves me to a place where I see myself better in light of my closeness to God. The closer we get to God, the better we see who we are. The light shines brighter. We discover more inadequacies, more deficiencies in our lives. Beloved, if you really want to get your hands clean, get close to God. And what it says is we must clean up our outwardly conduct. Therefore, we must talk like we are believers. We must walk like we are believers. We must live our lives like we are believers. When we look at this word hand and we understand this metaphorically, it suggests that this represents the conduct of the believer. He says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. He didn't say cleanse your hand, God do it. He says it is the responsibility of us. And beloved, this is what we have to do. We have to take a real life assessment of the conduct that we have. What is it that we are doing that does not model our walk and relationship with God? Whatever that is, we must look at that. We must then face that with reality. And as we are closer to God, we must clean up the conduct. We must clean up our outward lives. We must clean up the stuff that is not of God. So whatever that is, this is the beginning of the year. Many people make resolutions. Many people set goals. But what we must do is, as believers, we must take responsibility and say, I'm no longer going to allow this to be a part of who I am. This will not be the conduct that I continue Because it does not represent my relationship with Christ. And all of us know what it is. Nobody has to tell you. Each one of us know what conduct needs to be cleaned up in our outward lives. So that when people see us, they can clearly identify that we are in relationship with Christ. And that we are walking with God. But notice it says, not only cleanse your hand, you sinners, he says, but purify your hearts. This word purify. Your hearts, again, 
ever since active voice imperative mood. Our inner disposition must be right. See, some people, they know how to look good on the outside, but they have dirty hearts. They can smile. They can they can put on a facade. They can they can put on a show, but their heart is not connected to Christ. And therefore, they have bad intentions. They don't pray from a place that is by faith. But but in everything is merely an outward symbol. It is an outward show. But when God in by the penmanship of James, he says, not only cleanse your hands, but but purify your hearts. We can't be right on the outside yet wrong on the inside. We must clean ourselves both outwardly and inwardly. Beloved, this is what James is saying. He says your heart has to be right. Now, the closer we get to God, the closer we draw near to God, it should prompt this change of both heart and hand. When my heart is right with God, when my heart is humble before God, when my heart is submitted to God, then my motives will be pure. My direction will be clear. My heart will be so in tune with God that I can love right, that I can lead right, that I can live right, that I can learn right. But this does not happen by chance. It happens when we deliberately, definitively, and by discipline draw near to God. When I draw near to God, I then see how dirty my hands are because the closer I get to God, the more I'm in touch with God, the closer I am to being like Jesus and the nearer I am to him, I can see the stuff that does not model a walk with Christ and then I am convicted. And when I am convicted, I then have to submit my heart and my hands before God. God and say, God, I want my hands to be in such a way that they can be used for your glory. And God, my hands must be holy so that they can use so be used. So we need holy hands and a holy heart. That means hands that are set apart for sacred service, a heart that is set aside for sacred service. That is why we are committing to spiritual formation. Too long we've looked like we are doing good outwardly but inwardly we have wrong motives see when your heart has been purified you don't just do stuff for show you don't just do stuff for name you don't do stuff to be seen but you do it for the glory of God so, beloved the work that we have before us means that we've got to draw near to God see logic logic may suggest this that we must clean up our lives first. Once we clean up our lives, then we draw near to God. That, that's, that's, that's conventional wisdom. That's, that's the logic. It says, clean your life up, then you draw near to God. But the truth of the matter is James' logic is otherwise. James understands that the reality of it is, it is the presence of God that we come into. And when we come into his presence, we are then under his holy influence. As we are under his holy influence, then we understand that his holy influence demands holiness from us. And because of that, we then find ourselves motivated in such a way to desire to be more like God. Then both our hands and our hearts are free from evil. That is ultimately what James is saying. He says you can't follow the logic of the world. Clean up and then go get right. No, God says get close to me. And the closer you get to me, I am holy. And as you get closer to me, you recognize how unholy you are. And then under my holy influence, you have a desire and a determination. Thus, you become disciplined day by day, step by step. Let me tell you, beloved, this is not an overnight process. As you are spiritually formed, you don't just go from here to there overnight. It is a deepening process. And as you methodically walk this process 
as you meticulously go through this process, you will discover that as I employ, as I engage the spiritual disciplines, as I walk with God closer and closer every day, I see my life being different. And beloved, it can be measurable. I'm not talking about I spiritually, spiritually feel better. No, I'm talking about you will recognize it will be recognized by you and others that your life is being transformed by God. You are literally a better person because of your closeness to God. It shows in relationships with friends. It shows in relationship with family. It shows in relationship with your finance. It shows in relationship with your faithfulness. It shows in every facet of your life. Finally, James says, be close to God. He says, be clean for God. But then finally, be committed to God. That's what he says when he says double minded. He says, draw near to God. God will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Double-minded suggests this. If we're going to be committed to God, we must be faithful to God and focused on God. The double-minded suggests that there is this inner disloyalty. It's, it's this sin of being two-faced with God wavering in inconsistency. There are a lot of people who claim to be committed to God, but they're committed only in communication, but not committed in conduct. They're committed in talk, but not in walk. It's, it's, it's this double-mindedness that... James says it will allow the world to entice us away from a total single focus, single minded allegiance to God. If you if you're double minded, it suggests you have divided loyalties. You are unstable spiritually. And if you're unstable spiritually, it means that you're trying to please the world, trying to appease God, but it can't work that way. So what James says is that there must be a single, single-minded focus, a single-minded faithfulness. And beloved, I can share this with you. If you take serious the work that we will engage this year, listen, this, this is what I, I need you to, I need you to hear me good. It's, it's the same way you see people at the beginning of the year joining the gym, committing to gym memberships, committing to healthy eating and healthy living. So I'm going to, I'm going to live healthier this year. People committing to financial discipline. I'm going to manage my finances better. Well, I, I am, I am challenging you. I, I am challenging you to make the commitment to spiritual formation individually and as a church corporately. Let us take serious the spiritual disciplines. And as we start to teach through those this year, start to practice those. Notice practice. We'll never get perfect at, but, but practice. That means that I'm practicing the spiritual discipline of prayer. I'm practicing the spiritual discipline of worship. And the more I practice, the better I become. The more I practice, the better I become. Beloved, the ultimate goal for us is that every member of the New Mount Olive Baptist Church, every person that's connected to us here at the New Mount Olive Baptist Church who will join us in this journey of spirit, 
spiritual transformation through spiritual formation. Everyone who will partner with us, walk alongside us, we are committed to teaching you how to engage the spiritual disciplines. And as you engage those disciplines, you will discover how your life changes. And watch this. The closer you are to God, you will see transformation in relationships with family. The closer you walk with God, you will see transformation in how you handle your financial resources. If you follow this path of spiritual formation, you will see transformation of how it affects your mental health, how it affects your work health, how it affects your relationships and interpersonal relationships with others. Beloved, if we engage this work of spiritual formation, we must start initially by drawing near to God. We come close to God. God comes close to us. God, God comes close to us. He illuminates our minds. And we discover where our conduct needs to be corrected. We clean our hands. Then we start to look introspectively and see where there are matters of the heart that are challenged. God causes us to purify our hearts, then we'll be able to avoid being double-minded, having this disloyalty to God, this two-faced relationship with God. We become committed completely to God, and our lives will ultimately be changed. Gracious God, we say thank you. God, as we come to you this morning, we come asking Lord, that we would draw near to you, knowing that when we draw near to you, God, you will draw near to us. God, I pray for clarity of sight that we would see the areas of our life, that we would come face to face with the areas of our life that need to be cleaned up outwardly but also, God, that we would take note of the places in our heart needs to be purified for your glory. Lord, help us to no longer be double-minded, but fully committed to you. Gracious God, I pray for the person, for the persons who are not in relationship with Christ, God, you would convict their heart, their mind, that they would recognize their need for you. Oh, Lord, I pray for the person who perhaps walked away at some point. But, Lord, they are inclined today to return and renew the relationship that they once had with you. I pray, oh, God you would let them know that you are a God of grace, a God of mercy, a God of another chance. Lord, I pray for the person or persons, the family that's looking for a church, looking to be connected, looking to be in relationship with other believers, to be discipled. If you're leading them to the New Mount Olive Baptist Church, God, give them a sense of peace about that decision. God, give them an understanding that this is exactly where you want them to be so that they can grow in their walk and in their relationship with you. We thank you, O oh God, for who you are. We offer this prayer in the precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And every child of God said, Amen. Beloved, thank you so much for joining us. You still have time to join us in our 1045 in-person worship. Also, we want you to know that we look forward to you being with us in the days to come in this virtual space and in person. Now I'd like to offer our benediction. Gracious God, we stop now to say thank you. Thank you, God, for another day. Thank you for the bounty of blessings that you have so graciously given to each of us. We pray now, oh God, that as we leave this virtual space, you will guard us, keep us protected from the evil one, and give us a blessed 
rest of the day. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Our declaration, let us say this together. It's our new declaration for 2023. We, the New Mount Olive Baptist Church, surrender ourselves to the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. We strive to conform to the image of Christ as witnesses of the gospel for the transformation of the world. I love you and there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. May the Lord bless you and may he keep you is my prayer.